Hello, everyone. My name is Todd Grisham, the voice of the upcoming video game eSports Boxing Club. And joining me for our second edition of this uber popular roundtable is, of course, the founder and creative director of Steel City Interactive, Mr. Ash Habib, Will Kinsler, our global communications director, and our special guest this week, Boxing Fanatico, who is, of course, a content creator, one of the big names on YouTube. We're lucky to have him with us. We'll tell you more about why he's here and what he's been up to in just a minute. But, Ash, let's start with you right out of the gate. Last time uh, we were on this roundtable discussion, you said we had a couple of milestones to reach before we would announce our early access date. How are things going? Uh, thanks for that, Todd. Things are going uh, really well uh, on, on, on track, on schedule. Um, they're still... Obviously, a lot of work uh, that's taking place behind the scenes. But um, you know, since the last roundtable discussion, um, we've we've got to a position where uh, a multiplayer milestone has been achieved, uh, which we're relatively pleased with. Um, and we also carried out a focused playtest uh, where we invited uh, some members of the public to to essentially test and play the game, um, and uh, providing us feedback with how that went. So. Yeah, since, since the last round table, I um, mean, there's still a number of milestones to go, um, but but so far it's a case of, uh, yeah, so far so good. Um, we're, we're generally very pleased with the feedback that we got from the play test. That was a, that was a key moment for us because obviously over the last few months, uh, even since the, the content creator event where we got some feedback there, you know, the team have been working really, really hard in, in, in making changes, uh, making tweaks, because, you know, even for early access, we don't want to launch something uh, as a test bed, right? In terms of, you know, there's things that we can fix now uh, uh, rather than putting it out in early access for, for, you know, people to tell us what's wrong with the game, right? So we would rather um, have a game that's as, as polished as possible for, for an early access release. As far as that test went, what were some of the, you said you got a lot of feedback. What were some of the, the, the positives that you heard and some of the things that weren't as great? Yeah, I mean, look, the, the, the key thing for us, uh, for literally from, from day one, was about uh, the actual boxing mechanics, right? So, so taking visuals aside, audio aside, everything else, for us, it was all about the core mechanics of the game. Um, and, you know, as I think most people know, punches uh, and animations um, and the impacts were, you know, was always an area that we've openly said is something that we're, we're you know, we're not completely satisfied with um, and you know the play test showed some very good scores in, in, in that respect in terms of how the punches felt the combinations um, and one of the things that I, I really wanted to get across in, in in our game is just the feeling of being hit right and 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 you know transferring that from screen whilst you're playing the game um, and that's a very difficult thing to actually achieve um, but, but that was a, a moment I think we were pretty satisfied with in terms of the feedback, in terms of, you know, how the, the haymakers felt. Um, obviously, you know, there was there's some balancing issues that we've got to iron out, right? So there were things in terms of, you know, stamina. Um, so so there are, there's a number of areas that obviously we're, we're working on, but the core fundamentals uh, of the game, we were, we were really pleased with the, the feedback there. Well, we did release a gameplay video featuring, featuring Terrence Crawford that the public got to see. Uh, a lot of feedback on that, obviously, besides people going, when's the release date? When are you releasing the game? Well, <laughs> of the feedback you got from that, uh, do you think it was received pretty well? Yeah, I think, I think overall, I think people generally um, saw the improvements, you know, we've made with the punches, right? Um, and I think, you know, for us, again, you know, we've always spoken about the movement where we're, you know, really happy with how the movement in the game is coming along in terms of, you know, how some of the boxes move and, and, and really replicate how, how, you know, boxing takes place in the ring, because that's what we're, we're trying to do here. Um, obviously, there were some, some, you know, comments and views with regards to the visual aspect. Um, and, and I think probably on, uh, you know, I'd like to maybe talk a little bit about that. And I think, you know, one of the things that we're doing here uh, in terms of developing the game and also bringing the community along with us, uh, a project of this you know, size and scale, um, you know, we don't really have the luxury to, to you know, spend uh, a whole lot of time and resource uh, perfecting something and then you know, right at the end of that, you know, putting, putting something out. 
So, so you know, we made a decision of essentially taking the community on the journey with us so we can get real time feedback. Um, and sometimes as part of that process, we almost have to undo things or unpick certain things before they can get better. Um, so the decision here was taken that obviously in terms of the, the arena, the venue that we used for, for, for that particular video, um, I think some of the comments were that, you know, they didn't look as good as some of the other venues or the shots that we've shown. And I think it's a fair, it's a fair comment, it's a fair reflection. Um, but again, it was a case of, you know, we've made significant improvements to that venue, um, but that was always part of the plan, right? And, and as I mentioned, sometimes we have to kind of take one or two steps back to, to you know, really improve and go forward, forward in areas. And, you know, rather than making the community of people wait until we had improved and perfected that venue, um, and then, you know, launching that, uh, you know, it's not what this is about, right? This is about us, you know, keeping the community involved and updated as much as we can. Um, and, you know, things aren't going to look perfect, right? Um, but, you know, the key thing here is, you know, anything that we put out, right, it's not, it's not finalized, it's not finished. And, uh, you know, the comments with regards to the visuals, you know, they were valid in that video. And, you know, we're, we're uh, you know, an open and a transparent studio. So, um, you know, the next time I think people will see that, that venue, um, you know, we'll, we'll be looking forward to seeing what the, the feedback like is, uh, is there. Well, I know that the feedback was especially uh, welcome from uh, Will and Fanatico because they were in charge of putting that video together. Will, how did all that come about? Yeah, so, you know, obviously we've, you know, over the last year released a bunch of different sort of styles of gameplay videos. We've done these sort of dev update videos where the format, you know, a lot of times is either Ash or myself, you know, hopping on, talking through, you know, where we're at uh, in, in terms of the game. Uh, and we wanted to try something a little bit different, uh, highlighting, you know, one of the fighters that that somebody had, that nobody has seen before, right? So Terrence Crawford, kind of, uh, you know, an important fighter in our game. Uh, and I thought, you know what, uh, maybe the, maybe it'd be fun to work with a creator on this one. Um, you know, Fanatico has played the game before. Uh, we can show high level gameplay uh, between him and I doing that. Um, and also, you know, watching his videos, I know that he has a creative flair, has a, you know, ability to come in and, and add something uh, unique to the video. So it was fun to have him come out. Uh, he was here for about five days. We worked on the video. We played a lot of, of matches, obviously, during that time as well. Um, and, yeah, it was a great time, and it was a fun collaboration. And I'm really happy with how that turned out. Yeah. Fanatico, take me through that process of when you got the call. I know you'd been there in March for the, uh, the creator event. How did the game play compared to then? Take us through the whole process. Yeah. Um, I, well, yeah, Will gave me the call and he told me if I would be interested in this. And uh, of course, it was a no brainer to me. I was like, yeah, I'm 100 percent interested uh, in doing this. Uh, but yeah, playing the game, I remember vividly um, that the, the moment we booted up the new uh, build and I started throwing a few punches, I was just from that like initial period, I was already kind of shocked that the at the difference in the flow and, and how much uh, even my punches and all that stuff, the movement had improved. And then as I started diving deeper into the game to kind of test what else uh, is different, I started realizing that you know, I could block the body and, and move my head and stuff that we couldn't do before, or I can lean and punch very quickly, uh, or even leaning, I was able to move quick quicker and, and have more distance, more range, more control over that. Um, I, I, I was honestly uh, floored by how much it, it had improved from March to that to, to June. Um, and I, I even told Will the exact like number that came to my head was that the, the gameplay or the game itself feels about 50% better than the creator event. Uh, even just the feel like that tactile feel of like punching and, and receiving punches and, and trying to get away it just felt much more uh, visceral. Um, so, yeah, but that hope that whole uh, thing was an honor uh, to be part of it. Uh, never thought that, you know, something like that would even uh, take place. So for Will to, you know, and, and the team to, to give me that opportunity and then to see the, the reception, you know, to the trailer. Uh, I think that it was just like it came full circle. The whole thing was just like an amazing experience. So thank you so much, Steel City, for, for that. Hey, Will, you talked about you guys having some pretty big battles. What, what kind of things did you learn about the game maybe you didn't know before? 
Oh man. I mean, I think that was kind of like the revelation to me, right. As somebody that plays this game every single day, um, you know, playing it, I mostly play it, you know, against the AI here. Uh, you know, sometimes when I have, uh, you know, somebody come by, I'm able to, to play with an, a human opponent, but you know, I've not spent a whole week playing against somebody that is kind of capable of the high level play. So, I mean, for me, I think like we kind of spent the week, uh, basically going back and forth, trying to outsmart each other uh, in the game. And so uh, it opened up a lot of layers of, of stuff that, you know, I, I wasn't aware was, was possible. So like, you know, an example would be, you know, one of the things that Fanatico figured out right away was catch and shoot, right? So, you know, I'd come in a lot of times, I'd try to, you know, end my combination with a body shot. He figured that out. He knows I'm going to do that. And he'd time his block, and throw the counter and boom, you get that, you know, you get that spray of sweat off you that you, you know, you messed up. Um, <laughs> and he was doing that to me in a bunch of, in a bunch of the early matches. Um, and so, you know, I was having to figure out, okay, so, you know, what, what do I want to do about that? Well, you know, there's so many different ways you can approach it. Um, you know, uh, I would, I would come in and, you know, accept that that was going to happen. And I would try to show, throw a short, you know, uppercut on the inside before he could throw that shot. Or, um, you know, I'd use a, I'd faint a power, you know, I come in and, and throw my combination. And instead of throwing that, um, you know, throwing that last, you know, body hook in there, I'd faint a hard body hook and then throw, you know, a left hook, you know, with my other hand. Um, so there was just, I think, I don't know, what do you say, Fanatico? We got like seven or 10 layers deep in like trying yeah. to yeah. Well, I, outsmart I, each other. I, 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 one thing that, that Rack said was, and I think I, I, I believe this, was that I don't think anyone in the world had has ever seen the game being played the way we were playing it. Um, I think by day, you know, four or five, it was like, what's going on? Like we were just so many layers deep in terms of adjusting and, and, and evolving the gameplay that we were finding things out that like, that's where, that's where I found out that I can combine my default uh, punching combinations with the directional punching smoothly, and then be able to kind of subvert your expectations with those kind of combinations, uh, which where I would use the overhand right and get right over your guard. And uh, and I love that dynamic guard. A lot of people are, are thinking, oh, well, is it going to be too difficult? Like, I don't think it is that difficult to kind of catch your opponent's rhythm and then block accordingly. Um, I think you were able to do that to me. I was able to do that to you. I think yeah. maybe like, you know, a casual player may not be able to just pick it up right away. But I think more experienced players can can, uh, you know, take a get a grasp of that type of uh, defense. Yeah, I do think that's an area where, you know, it, it helps to, you know, have that knowledge of boxing where, you know, kind of the order and the, the punches, that are probably, they're going to come back towards you. Right. Um, you know, I think I think for me, like one of the stories was like basically that that of the week was that like it, it didn't feel like the fights played out the same. Right. It's like when somebody would make an adjustment, it's like I spent a whole fight, you know, uh, one time you know, just trying to understand when I thought Fanatico would throw a shot and I would try to hit him first. Right. Um, and that was like, for that whole fight, that was like the thing I had in the back of my head. Can I do this? Um, you know, I had other fights where I was just trying to, I felt like he was throwing the bigger counters. And so I'm like, well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to match him there. So I'm going to, I'm just going to try to touch him with light shots whenever I can. Right. I'm going to double the jab. I'm going to throw, you know, I'm going to throw in between his, his counters. I'm going to, you know, as we exit in the exchange, I'm going to just try to touch him one more time, you know, stuff like that. Um, and yeah. so, yeah, we, we just had things just played out totally differently based on what we were learning. Yeah. And one, one thing that, that frustrated me from the beginning, cause like I wanted to be that guy. I just wasn't your jab. You always was out jabbing me. And it was yeah. driving me nuts because I wanted to be the jab guy. I wanted to be the guy that could play on the outside on you. But you you, you just you threw that out the window for me. So I had to come up with so many different ways of engaging you because you will always out jab me. I can't just try to jab you because you would probably get it out first or do a side step jab or something that was like, you know, like was going to mess me up. So that's when like the catch and shoot, I even evolved that to timing it, you know, to, to, to the head and the body. To, to make it even more confusing for you. Um, and it was just beautiful, man. We, we did so many different things, even up until the moment that I had to go to the airport, like 
we still even at that time had shifted the gameplay like right before like a few hours before i had to yeah. leave which was incredible <clears throat> Let me tell you about when I played Fanatico. You can hear my little story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's hear what, what happened in that fight. Hear my story. This is back in March, and you've won, you've won like world titles in video gaming, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, Competitions. Like guy, Ash, this yeah. guy like the best of the best. So I'm going to play against Fanatico, and he's doing the stick and move, the little slap and tickle with me. I'm the guy, well, <laughs> I don't have the patience. Let's just freaking go to war, right? All right, fine. Boop, boop. I get some shots in. I'm doing pretty good. And he, you know, he eventually grinds me down and beats me. But I was like, man, I was hanging with the world's best. I <laughs> walk around the corner and showbiz, one of the other, shout out to showbiz. Showbiz is there. And I hear them talking. And showbiz goes, I mean, showbiz goes, man, he was touching you up. Or were you letting him? He goes, oh, I was just toying with him. I was letting him get it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, geez, a lot. So, yeah. This guy's legit. I I think I think one of the things I appreciate about Fanatico is how much of a competitor uh, he is. Because I'm I'm not on that level of of desire to win. I think like for me, it's it's more of like a curiosity of you know ah oh, you know can I solve the puzzle you know. But it's not I'm not driven in that way. And so it's like we had days where if it if I got the best of him that day or even just like at the end of that day, like he, the next morning he, he was like we got to play. We got to play again right now, right? And and we had like a specific matchup that was kind of like our our default matchup to the week, where I was using Lyndon Arthur and he was using Roy Jones, and that it that kind of became the standard for like where are we at right now? Who's mm -hmm. who's got the advantage uh, so that we could could go back to that fight and see but, where where we stacked up? But one of the reasons why that became the standard was because a lot all the fighters felt different. Like I, I remember I played with Adelaide and I loved how Adelaide you know fights, and I was actually kind of shocked too that he had all like his punches from the. Uh, from the March trailer that was really cool, like the looping kind of body hook and stuff. So like it just I wanted that I wanted that same ground so we could always check to see because maybe I, I'm better with Adelaide than you are with, uh, you know, Tyson Fury or something and and things like that. So I wanted always to have that same ground. And I think that the Lyndon Arthur and uh, the Roy Jones Jr. Like that was the litmus test if, if I won consistently then i'm better right now <laughs> and if you won consistently then you're better at that let me moment. ask everybody this you only get one answer all right ash who overall in the game looks everything who is your favorite character so far in esbc one fighter tyson fury tyson will connor ben fanatico roy jones jr i like deontay wilder that's great four different fighters that's awesome <laughs> Hey, one thing, Ash, that uh, I was wondering about, how's the judging going? I know that's got to be a little difficult. Are they relying strictly on, like, CompuBox numbers for who gets the decisions? So judging, um, you know, we wanted to really expand on, on the way the judging system works in, in ESBC. Um, and, you know, we've done that by giving judges essentially personalities, right? So, so you, you'll find judges that will score for, for accuracy, You'll find judges that will score for the big shots, right? The more eye-catching shots. Um, you'll have more balanced judges that take everything into account. Um, and there's, you know, one or two other uh, scenarios in there the, with, the, with regards to how the judges um, can score. And, you know, what we found based on the feedback uh, is that it's, it's working out pretty well. Um, I mean, you know, during the fight, a, a predictive scorecard comes up, right, where, uh, you know, it might be a commentator's view in terms of how this fight is being scored, but that even that there's a good chance that that'll be, that'll be different from the actual final scorecards. Um, so yeah, we, we wanted there to be a question mark in terms of scoring, right? Uh, as is the case, I think we can all agree on in, in boxing, probably not as controversial as some of the decisions we see, but um, there's, there's certainly an element that, that we want to keep players on their toes where, you know, it may not be as as straightforward or you know as easy as they think if they if they want to fight. So we think we've got a pretty good balance, and we're excited to kind of get get uh, you know the community's feedback once he wants to start playing the game in terms of how that feels. Um, but I just want to touch briefly on what what Will and Fanatico were saying in terms of the gameplay and going you know a few layers uh, beneath the surface. And you know for um, you know for me to hear that it's 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 pretty amazing because 
I think the whole philosophy and the mantra for us when we started making this game was really to try and stay true to the almost the core tenets of boxing. And you know, one of the things that that young fighters are taught is you know, you know, hit and not get hit, right? And 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 that was one of the the key driving factors in terms of our movement system, right? Because we I just always felt like you know in in combat games it was almost you know about hitting the other person or, or kind of turning into a bit of a slugfest and. I think, I think, you know, saying we want to make a game where it's based around hitting and not, and not getting hit is probably easy to say. It's, it's way more difficult actually putting that into practice. Um, and, you know, the, the months and months of iterations that the studio, the guys have been making to the game, to be able to get it to a point where, you know, Will and Fanatico are, are you know, saying pretty much exactly that in terms of how the gameplay feels, how they're constantly trying to outsmart outdo each other, um, kind of like a cat and mouse scenario. Um, you know, that's exactly the kind of, you know, experience, the, you know, the place where we wanted the game to be. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to touch on that because, you know, that is a, an incredibly important part of the game um, where players can genuinely feel like, you know, if they know about boxing, then they should be doing pretty well in ESPC. And what about one punch KOs? I know that's uh, when I was fighting Fanatico, I was like, uh, what is it, the upper right trigger to throw that freaking power punch? And I'd catch him and it'd like, not, he'd walk right through it. I need to be able to knock people out with one punch, Ash. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I thought you were going to go into one of your end of camera kind of punch finishes there, Todd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not quite there yet. Um, well, look, I think, I think the one punch KOs, um, again, is, is we're trying to replicate what happens in the ring, right? And, uh, you know, there may be some some varying opinions about having complete chaos in the game. Um, so for us right now, uh, we feel that it, it, it feels pretty good. Uh, we want to have a balance between it not occurring every second fight, right? Where, you know, everyone's getting knocked out left, right and center. Um, so we're just trying to find the right balance between, you know, how often, you know, somebody does get knocked out in the game completely. Um, because it's, it's a hot topic right now. And, you know, I'll be interested to hear what the, you know, our community thinks about, you know, complete flash chaos, right? I mean, there's talk of, of, of you know, some people that in terms of competitive environments in esports, you know, complete flash chaos should be disabled, right? Because if you're in a final and, you know, you've just been knocked out by a, a you know, a, a KO in the first 30 seconds, how that's going to feel as from an experience point of view. So, you know, we're, we're, essentially you know that that's an area that's you know we haven't finalized but we feel like it's in a pretty good place right now we only saw one the whole week that we were playing mm -hmm. uh, and it actually ended up being kind of uh, a bit ironic because uh we were doing Deontay Wilder I was controlling Wilder and Fanatico had Tyson Fury and of course I wanted to use Deontay Wilder and see if I could could knock him out um and you know about halfway through the fight it became really clear, like, I'm not going to win this fight on the scorecards. So I was looking for that one big punch. Uh, and what ended up happening is maybe around the seventh or eighth round, I got hit with a with a one punch right hand counter and the fight was over. And I was like, well, there's our one punch KOs, man. So, <laughs> one of them. so at least in the amount of fights that we played, it, it kind of felt like it's in a good spot now. Hopefully, you know, get into early access and, and, and people will, will let us know where it's at. Uh, but yeah, I think from my perspective, like, yeah, it's a part of boxing, right? You just don't want it to happen too often. And Attica, what, what's your biggest complaint about the game right now? We got to take the bad with the good. What's your biggest complaint? Um, obviously, like some of the like glitches were a little bit annoying, but I, I, I don't even think of that as like something that I would have to even think about. Uh, right now, um, obviously, the punches could probably still, you know, get a little bit more improved, but they're they're much better than they were before. Um, it's hard to say. I really... I did enjoy most of what what I experienced. I want to see it like completed, like a completed thing where, you know, Kenny Bayless is all like super involved and in everything. But um, right now, if I had to pick something, uh, probably still maybe the 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 whole leaning and punching at it while being in that angle. Uh, probably that's maybe the only thing I could think of. But overall, like I said, like if that game was to drop. Uh, you know, if they clean the glitches, of course, and if that game was to drop the, the way we played it, it would probably change uh, combat sports uh, video games. Wow. Was your, by the way, was your, did you have commentary on? Was I on there? 
Uh, no, we did not have the commentary on. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Did you have it on and you muted it because I'm no, 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 no. We ha- we didn't have it at all. We didn't have it. At I, all. I I I know you remember this, Todd, but we we called you and asked you to do voiceover for the video, <laughs> so we didn't have commentary on. You remember you yeah. sent us some? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He mentioned he mentioned Ken, Kenny Bayless. Uh, what's the latest with with him and those glitches? And how involved is he going to be in this game or any ref for that matter? So I think as some, some people may have seen, you know, Kenny was, was in the voice um, recording studio uh, doing some lines for the game. So, um, you know, right now the referee in the game um, is an area that needs um, quite a bit of work. So, so we're, not, we're not satisfied at the moment um, in terms of how the referee's uh, working right now. But in terms of interactions, you know, there'll be a um, referee coming in to, um, you know, take points, deductions off, uh, you know, illegal blows through to checking a fighter's, you know, cut or checking a fighter's, you know, his eye or her eyes closed with bruising. So there will be, you know, um, some significant referee interactions. Um, and obviously a lot of that requires, you know, quite a lot of work from the team. So, so whilst we're happy with the direction we're, we're taking with referees, um, there's still a lot of work to be done because I think as probably most people can see in our videos, Right now, the referees either just stood, stood in the corner um, or, or just moving kind of like in, in maybe in weird angles. So that, that, that's a, a big area of, of, of improvement for us to, to get towards early access. Well, well, speaking of being more immersive in the game, I know at one point you talked about maybe for elite level video game players, maybe creating a more immersive mode in the game. Is that still happening? And what would that look like? Yeah, I mean, again, that's, that was one of the core almost, you know, philosophies of, of this game early on in that, you know, I wanted this game to be, um, you know, again, bring that, that player into to that, have that immersive feeling where, you know, they feel like they're in the ring, uh, they're experiencing everything apart from getting hit in the face, right? That's the, that's the level that we wanted to try and hit. So the immersive mode, you know, is still a work in progress, right? But currently um, we've, we've done an immersive mode which removes the hood uh, pretty much entirely, um, where you know you don't even see the round timer, right? You don't even see the the, the which round you're in, um, because again, you know, in, in boxing, a fighter, you know, they don't get a, a clock that they can that they can you know look at, and uh, you know you hear it even in between rounds, right? Where a fighter sometimes asks, "What round? You know, what round is it?" Right? And mm-hmm. and and for us, it's almost trying to find that balance between you know having a really immersive kind of mode. Um, but you know, there's, there's levels that I think are going to require a lot of balancing. And again, you know, I'd like to hear what the community think about, you know, that aspect of what we're trying to do. Um, I mean, there's, there's one or two ideas that I had, which probably takes it, takes it a little bit too far or too extreme to, um, to, I guess, to, to reality where it's like, Hey, if you get caught with a counter, you know, I want there to be a, a significantly high chance of you getting knocked out or, or, if you get caught in the middle of a, a, of a big punch, then, you know, that should have a significant impact on you getting knocked out. But again, it's just about balance, right? Where we've got, to, we've got to balance it between, you know, what takes place in real life to what is actually enjoyable to play. So, you know, our immersive mode um, compared to, you know, the standard mode that we've got, we just want to get that right, strike that right, right balance. Uh, and again, you know, this is an area that we'll be looking to the community for as well in terms of feedback. What are your thoughts on that, Fanatico? Uh, I think it's awesome. Um, I'm one of those people that I do like uh, that feeling where I feel like it's if I'm watching the fight or I'm part of a real fight. Uh, and if you can get as close to that as possible, it's always going to be entertaining for me. Those kind of things entertain me. Um, and I'm sure that a lot of people in the community as well, because I'm always interacting with uh, with the community, um, that they appreciate that kind of stuff. Uh, I think, yeah, you can definitely do that. And um, if you have like a separated thing where even with online, in terms of that stuff, uh, we're going to get fights that probably are more in line with what we're looking for in terms of people wanting to go there and and box, as opposed to getting in there and and meeting a a spammer or something like that, uh, which normally happens if you just go into regular online modes. Uh, So I think uh, it's cool to have those two things. And it kind of creates an avenue for people who want to play with a more realistic style uh, to have uh, enjoyment. 
So I'm I'm all for that. Like, yes, please, more, more of that stuff. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, I guess this about wraps it up. Is there any other thing coming up on the timeline that we can kind of tease for our fans that maybe they should be looking forward to? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think breaking like news. Give us breaking news. <laughs> We'll see. I mean, I think, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're trying to put out content more often. I hope people are recognizing that we're going to keep doing these round tables regularly. We've got the renders coming out of the fighters every month. We know people want to see more gameplay. We, we do want to show longer, you know, sort of extended gameplay. We're working on it. We're trying very hard to get there. Um, you know, overall, we really appreciate people being like super patient about all the things that, you know, that they're waiting for, whether it's seeing longer gameplay or, you know, wanting to know what the date is, you know, we're, we're excited for that stuff to happen too. We just want to make sure that we, we do it in the right way. Um, and that when we tell you a date that we also are right about the date, <laughs> um, you know, that we're, <laughs> that we're not coming back, you know, one more time and saying, just kidding guys. Um, you know, but so, yeah, I mean, hopefully people will, you know, keep giving us feedback on the content we're putting out. Um, we're definitely reading that stuff and thinking about it as we go to make the, the next piece of content we're releasing. All right, Ash, you're the founder of the whole company. I'll give you the last word. Uh, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, look, I just want to say thank you to, to the community for, for the feedback that, that we get, you know, we, we go through, uh, you know, what you guys uh, say uh, with regards to what we're creating here, because again, I've said this, you know, a few times before that, you know, you know, we were the community as well in terms of getting this game off the ground, you know, in terms of making this for the community. Um, and, you know, that, that, that philosophy is still, still the same today, you know, where we're delighted with regards to how development has gone. We're delighted with, you know, a lot of aspects in the game, uh, but we want to still kind of remain, remain true to our, you know, our indie studio core, right? Where, you know, we're doing things like this, where we've got, you know, Fanatico talking about the game here, um, and, and and getting involved with the community because you know this 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 game has also been built up by the community right so you know that's that's not about to change you know anytime soon so for me it's just a, a thank you for the community's patience and the support you know whilst we're trying to achieve you know what I think a lot of people said was impossible two years ago right um, so you know that's yeah those are pretty much the final comments from me. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, we, we, we mentioned Terrence Crawford's video that we released. We also announced that Ryan Garcia is going to be in the game. Fanatico, I know you love him. I think one of the toughest jobs, other than Ashes and Wills and maybe mine, is that these guys are going to have to give the attributes to these fighters. I mean, Fanatico, who should have faster hands? Roy Jones, Sugar Ray Leonard, or Ryan Garcia? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. They're all. You know what I mean? How do you, who, 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 yeah, that's hard. Do? That's hard. Yeah. I, I would probably say, I would say probably uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, but that, that's just me. I don't know. Like, it, it, somebody might have a different opinion. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe Roy Jones, just because his arms are so longer, but he can still get there so quick. I mean, that guy, best fighter I've ever seen in my lifetime, Roy Jones Jr. I guess what? Pretty, safe bet. Pretty safe bet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hopefully we can do this again soon. Fanatico, thanks for joining us. Will, see you next time. And Ash, you better hurry up and release that damn date. Do you hear me? I can't, I can't beat the damn computer I played last night. I can't win. <clears throat> you can't. No, the computer is actually was pretty hard. It was kicking my butt day one, but then I was I kicking my butt. I'm not even on pro. I'm on like amateur. <laughs> <laughs> no, I put, it only kicked my butt. It only, it only kicked my butt day one. After that, I put it on the hardest difficulty I could beat it. But you just got to get the little rhythm to try to get it. Because I'm going a combination. He's hitting me too. And his, he's, for some reason, he's always got more power and more stamina. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that's true that is that is the thing that they do have yeah. more power more more stamina more health we're making him harder right <laughs> at the moment i'm not happy with how the air is playing right now so there's a whole lot of work actually coming going taking place in the current sprint where the guys are uh, you know for me the max difficulty should be almost unbeatable and you know right now i can beat him pretty much every time so you can why are you acting surprised <laughs> because <I beat> you <laughs> Yeah, I think it's too easy. I think it's too easy right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is pretty easy.